multiple tabs without having to save the new configuration set. New in Centerware Web 5.0, the Protocol tab has a significant number of new settings. This now includes IPv6 settings in addition to LDAP settings. There are also extensive new network scan settings, as well as security settings to allow IP filtering, IPsec, and enabling the audit log. Also new to Centerware Web 5.0 is the ability to manage EIP applications on Xerox Work Center devices. Customers can remove all EIP applications deployed to work centers, enable or disable any EIP application, and finally, add a new EIP application or delete it. This remote management capability is desired when multiple EIP applications need to be deployed. Xerox's Centerware Web is the first output device management application that offers vendor-specific MIB settings. This allows a unique capability to set, modify, and deploy proprietary HP configuration settings, thereby improving the ability to use Centerware Web as a single management tool in heterogeneous environments. Some examples of these HP settings include default job options, general security, device sign-in, device information, date and time, and backup and restore. Now, let's talk about configuration tasks. Configuration tasks are used to apply a configuration set to the desired devices. On the main page, you will see all configuration tasks that have been defined, as well as the current status of each task, which includes task name, and last start date, and last end date. From the Actions pull-down menu, configuration tasks can be created, edited, started, stopped, and deleted. When creating a new configuration task, the identity information must be entered. This includes whether it's enabled or not the task name, and description. From the Action Performed section, the administrator is given a choice to either apply the configuration set or to simply check compliance against the set. Next, in the Printers Used section, the administrator is given a choice to apply the configuration set to an explicit list of selected groups or to use the Printer Expressions option, which will allow the list of devices to be established dynamically using expressions. A configuration task can be set to run when a device is first discovered to ensure new devices have the desired settings, as well as set to run on a scheduled basis to ensure the device always has the organization's approved settings. This can be used to ensure all devices are in compliance with having the correct settings. This addresses any settings applied outside of Centerware Web, as they will be considered out of policy and will be overwritten. When defining a printer expression for a configuration task, multiple attributes can be used to filter the printers being managed to a target set of devices. The filter can include a large number of attributes, including firmware version, manufacturer, model, or IP address. For example, a named configuration task can be created to target only the Work Center 5600 series of devices. Another example may be a configuration task that targets only the devices in the Northeast District. This screen shows the results of executing the configuration task. It is important that administrators be aware of any devices that have not been updated as expected. Some of the results that can be viewed include the progress, last time it ran, and the status of devices that passed or failed. On the results tab, a detailed list is provided of every device the task was applied to as well as every setting within the task. When applying an audit check, both the current settings on the device and the desired setting for each property. This list can be used to verify that the settings were successfully applied to each device and if there were any errors. The user can drill into the device to determine what setting Centerware Web was not able to set on the printer. Typically, when a setting comes back in error, it could be that the device does not support that setting altogether or the version of that device does not support the setting. You can check the Centerware Web compatibility list for more information. Now, let's talk about firmware upgrades. An important feature of Centerware Web is the ability to upgrade the firmware on Xerox devices. Before a device can be upgraded, the firmware file has to be downloaded from Xerox.com and uploaded into Centerware Web. From the main upgrade printer page, 
select the Add Delete Files from the Upgrade File Actions. From this screen, you are able to manage the firmware files that have already been uploaded to Centerware Web, or add new files. To add a new file, select the Add Action. Select to associate the file with a specific model, or enter part of the model name to associate with devices in the same model family that will accept the same firmware file. Typically, firmware files are tailored to only be applicable to a single Xerox model or a family of Xerox models. The next step is to enter the path to the firmware file, or select the Browse button to select the file. Centerware Web also allows you to upload an attachment such as a README or release notes, and enter a description. This information can help later on to understand why the firmware was applied. Once you select Schedule Upgrade from the main Upgrade Printer page, you will launch a four-step process to finish upgrading the device. In Step 1, you are required to select the firmware file that you just uploaded to Centerware Web. Step 2, choose the group of devices you plan on updating. Step 3. Choose the printers you plan on upgrading. The list of printers will automatically be filtered to the printers in the group that meet the criteria entered for the firmware file that was uploaded. Step 4. You have the ability to select how often to poll and how long to poll for when checking to see when the upgrade is done. Some devices take longer than others, so these settings should be checked on a few devices before applying to a large number of devices. You also have the choice to either apply this update now or to apply it later. It is highly suggested that the upgrades are performed during off hours because it makes the printer unavailable while the upgrade is being performed. It is also suggested that the upgrade is checked on one or two devices before applying to an entire fleet of printers. Once the upgrade is run, the results page can be reviewed to determine if the upgrade was performed successfully. The main progress sections show the overall status of the upgrade, including how many devices were successful, how many had warnings, and how many failed. Each device can be analyzed to determine the reason why it didn't upgrade. Centerware Web will check the device three times after upgrade to see if the firmware of the device changed, and if it didn't, it will mark the device with a warning. Some reasons why this might not have passed may be that the upgrade took longer than expected, the device was already at the desired firmware level, or the device had firmware upgrade disabled. Job-based or network accounting. Next, we will talk about job-based accounting, also known as network accounting. Let's describe how job-based accounting works. First, every user needs to enter the user and account ID on the Xerox print driver when printing, or at the device UI when copying or scanning. If a customer wants to always use the same user and or account ID, the driver can be set to have this fixed, eliminating the need to have it entered for every print job. Second, the Xerox device with network accounting enabled verifies the user and account ID, processes the job, and collects usage data. Third, Centerware Web retrieves this user data. And fourth, the administrator uses the Centerware Web job-based accounting software to analyze data and print reports. Understanding JBA Network accounting, or job-based accounting, JBA, an option on most Xerox devices, offers a high level of device management and cost analysis for an entire network. Print, scan, server fax, and copy jobs are tracked and stored for each user on an accounting server. An administrator formats the data and generates reports. A network accounting kit provides device enablement only. The Centerware Web interface refers to accounting as device-based accounting. Network accounting is different than the accounting that comes standard with most Xerox MFDs, i.e. Xerox standard accounting. Network accounting has a 50,000 account limit, 10,000 for WorkCenter Pro 123-128. Onbox validation. The accounts are downloaded from the central database on the Centerware web server to each MFD. Offbox validation. User and account information is stored on a server rather than downloaded to each device. And when a job is initiated at the local UI, user credentials are sent to the server for validation. 
Let's talk about administrator and device settings with regards to job-based accounting. On general administrator settings, the administrator needs to decide how often to retrieve the accounting data from the MFDs to the central database on the Centerware web server. In addition, they need to design the protocol when retrieving this data. The administrator has alternative ways to add end users. They are provided a way to manually add and edit them, in addition to an option to import them from the customer's active directory if one exists. They can also add or edit chargeback codes. On validation settings, the administrator has the ability to specify validation either directly on the MFD or from a server. If this validation is from a server, the administrator will choose whether to use the Centerware web server or an alternative location. Finally, there is the ability to specify whether accounting is going to be used for walk-up services, which include copy or network scanning, and or for print services. So where do you find job accounting and device-based accounting? The device-based accounting configuration page can be accessed from the administration section of Centerware Web using the left-hand menu, drop-down menu, or main page. Under the job accounting selection, select device-based accounting to configure when to retrieve job data from the devices. On this page, you can also enter the email address that will receive notification when job data cannot be imported. Under user management on the administration tab, you can configure the accounting users. You can manually add users or import from a CSV file from this location. Centerware Web also allows users to import directly from Active Directory, which we will be talking about later. When selecting to add a new user manually, you will be able to enter in the first and last names as well as their network and accounting names. The accounting name is required to be entered by the user at the MFD. From this screen, you can select the chargeback codes that are associated with the user. When importing users, the CSV file must contain the same values entered when creating a single user. If a user is allowed to enter multiple chargeback codes, then there needs to be a separate record, one for each code associated with that user. Once the file has been selected, it can then be imported. When the file has been imported, a results page is displayed showing how many users were added to the system, how many users were updated, and if there were any errors found while importing the file. This page can be used to verify that all information contained in the import file was correct and that all the users were added to the system. When the View Errors button is selected, a CSV file is downloaded that contains information about where an error occurred. The error file contains an additional column that explains what happened when processing the entry. This file can be used to correct any problems that occurred with the original import file and then be imported again with the correct file. You can define the chargeback codes to be used when a user authenticates to use network accounting. Once they have been defined, they can be associated with any user. Therefore, any chargeback code can be used by one or more users. To configure Centerware Web to import users directly from the customer's Active Directory, select Active Directory Customer Import from the User Management section on the Administration page. When the page first comes up, it will display a list of Active Directories that Centerware Web can detect. Select the desired Active Directories and use the arrows to add them, or enter the desired Active Directory into the Manual Entry field and select the arrow to add it. Next, you can choose how often to import users into Centerware Web. You have the flexibility to create new records and or update existing records. This allows all users stored in Centerware Web to be synchronized with the Active Directory server. After Centerware Web has imported the Active Directory, any Active Directory object can be selected for each user field supported by CWW. Centerware Web will default most fields to the best selection. However, this screen allows you to map them to ensure proper alignment. The next step is to click on the Test button and then, when the Test button is selected from the Field Mapping page, Centerware Web will connect to the Active Directory and start pulling user information to display on the screen. This screen can be used to verify that the selection chosen in the field mappings is correct before saving the settings and importing users. Once you are satisfied with the mappings, you will press the Back button 
and save the settings that you have made. JBA information is located on the printer device page. This screen will only appear if the JBA service has been enabled and it serves as a summary of the settings that we have just reviewed. After JBA has been configured, you should access JBA for one of the devices by going to its device page. Click on Edit Job Accounting Properties to access. Now we will configure the validation settings. The administrator has the ability to specify validation, either directly on the MFD or from a server. If this validation is from a server, the administrator will choose whether to use the Centerware web server or an alternative location. Finally, there is the ability to specify whether accounting is going to be used for walk-up services, which includes copy or network scanning, and or for print services. After configuring the single device, you'll want to consider saving the settings as a configuration set to apply to several devices. This is a job accounting report that will provide information about each job submitted. This report can be used to determine who is printing and how much they are printing to assist in reducing overall print cost. Security Policies and Profiles for Devices Next, we'll cover security policies and setting profiles for devices. With regards to print queue management, getting detailed information on a print queue requires local administrator privileges on the actual server where the print queue is attached. Centerware Web uses the security features built into Microsoft Windows operating systems, including user authentication and authorization, services configuration and management, secure terminal services support, group policy deployment and management, Internet connection firewall, including security logging settings and CMP settings. With regards to Windows Active Directory, Centerware Web works with Microsoft's Active Directory and NTFS security. The application can monitor print queues on Windows Vista, XP, and 2003 workstations in addition to printers. Printer problems can occur on printer queues or on printers. The queue management capability allows the monitoring and troubleshooting of problems in an end-to-end -end fashion, from queue to printer. The application has the ability to run as a particular domain user, and if this user is in the local administrator's group of a particular server, then the software can monitor and troubleshoot all of the printer queues on that server. With the Centerware Web Security Configuration Set tab, customer security policies can be enforced. New admin passwords can be defined, default SNMP community names can be changed, and local consoles can be secured from unauthorized use. We'll continue here with the security of applications to the Xerox network printers. With Centerware Web Printer Defaults page, the date and time can be adjusted to any time zone to ensure that all logs maintained by the printer contain the proper time stamps. You also have a number of choices for the source of the time. Using Centerware Web, we can disable unused protocols by two different methods. The first is via the Edit Device page as shown on this screen. Network protocol such as NetWare, Microsoft Networking, in addition to print protocols such as Port 9100 or LPR, LPD. Device discovery protocols such as SLP or UPnP are included as well. Unused services can also be disabled via a configuration set under the Security tab as shown on the screen. Using the Edit Device page, the administrator has a comprehensive set of authentication and authorization settings. There is a flexibility to have the source of the authentication as local on the device or remote via the network. A variety of network authentication types are available to ensure valid user credentials. Finally, there is the ability to restrict access to the various services like network scanning by locking one or more services to only authenticated users. Alternatively, if administrators do not want any users to use one or more services, they can hide them as well. There are two settings for disk overwrite, which is known as image overwrite on the device. The first setting gives the administrator the choice of overwriting the entire disk or, alternatively, not overwriting areas of the disk used for storing jobs. The second setting enables the administrator to schedule a set cadence when the device's disk is overwritten. 
Another security feature is the ability to run configuration sets against a group of devices and review the progress report to inspect any unauthorized changes. Next, we'll cover reports. Reports are easily selected from the home page or the top pull-down menu from any of the other areas. Centerware Web's tabular reporting capabilities are intended to both maintain inventory and track the usage and service history of managed devices. In a first-time configuration, you can generate an initial device list and page count summary for use in establishing a baseline of your installation. Centerware Web includes the ability to generate the following reports. The Asset Report lists the devices in Centerware Web's database. The status report displays devices needing attention. The usage counter history report shows changes in page counts over a period of time. The alert history report identifies events requiring attention over a period of time. The job accounting report displays print jobs for managed printers. And named reports allows the user to create a new saved report with their unique criteria for later use. All reports require that you configure email communications, either during installation or in administration, and status retrieval. The report configuration process allows you to customize such things as the report heading, the output file format, the fields to include, the order in which to include them, and the recipients. We will show this by displaying several slides typical of the printer asset report configuration, generation, and delivery. Centerware Web's graphical reporting capabilities are intended to maintain inventory, meter usage, and track the error history of managed devices. In a first-time configuration, you can generate an initial device list and page count summary for use in establishing a baseline for your installation. We will begin with the Printer Asset Report creation by clicking the button or link on the report's home page that leads us to this screen. The steps required to configure each of the different reports is very similar. Once a report type has been selected, it can be displayed, sent, or configured. By choosing to display a report, you still have the option to also send it as well. Choosing Send Report emails the report to the specified recipients. You have the ability to specify whether to send only the URL link or include the report as a file attachment in addition to the link. This is configured in the Network section of the Administration page. If applicable to the report, the What to Report On section specifies what group or groups to be included in the report. Simply select from the available groups and click on the arrow to move them down to the Included Groups section for inclusion in the report. The Printer Status Report is the only report where this option cannot be configured. Up to two fields from the report can be used to specify grouping or sorting within the report. Examples would include grouping by device model or location. The field content and column order in this report is defined in the Included Fields section. Each of the reports has a predefined set of default fields as a starting point. Fields can be added or removed as needed. As we continue to set up the printer asset report and move down the configuration page, there is an area to specify the email recipients. You may also customize the message body with the ability to give a custom subject and a custom note at the front or back of the report. Reports are generally available in up to three different formats. CSV for database or spreadsheet use, HTML for immediate viewing, and XML, or Extensible Markup Language. Centerware Web has the ability to define a scheduled period for reporting. All reports can be sent on a one-time, hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly basis as required. The language to be used for the report can also be specified here. For graphical reports, the user will be able to choose the graph type, the device category, and the color palette to be used. Here, the email with the report attached has been sent. This is what the attachment in the email of the printer asset report might look like. The page count history report shows the page count history for devices that have historical data collection.